Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Welcome to part two of our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of August 22nd through August 26th. And in part two of our weekly trading game plan, we'll talk about the top swing trading stocks to watch, what we're putting on our watch list for this week, uh, what we've got in our bullpen, our shopping list, and our strategies for uh, techniques for trading during this uh, trading week of August 22nd through 26th. Welcome, DS Greg. Thank you for joining us for the live stream of part two. Glad to see you. And if you have not already seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week, where we did all our market analysis, our sector analysis, uh, identified opportunities, potential opportunities for stocks to pick for this week, we'd highly recommend you also see part one, what goes up in the markets. And again, you can find the link to this um, also in the notes for this uh, part two of weekly trading game plan for this week, uh, which you can find a link to the public Google Drive folder in the description box below it has these notes and those from our previous game plans. And again, links to all the tools, etc. that we'll uh, be using today. So we'll jump into our uh, stock picks for swing trades for this week. First, I will review some of our trades from the past week. Um, we we made a number of, of trades. The first one is cold. Cold is the short on natural gas. Um, you can see we we went long on the 16th at 10:44. We pretty much got stopped out. Uh, pretty much break even and i want to jump over to weeble and uh, kind of show you uh, the entry and exit points and what happened in between uh, on cold so if we look at cold for this week you can see we entered here pretty much when it bottomed here and then it was pretty much flat went up a little bit and then on um it was that Thursday, uh, they had the inventory, natural gas inventory coming out. And so you can see it had gone above this pivot point. I put a stop in at that pivot point uh, in preparation for that inventory data. So I wasn't going to uh, lose money if uh, it reacted negatively to that inventory data, which you see. And they drove the price up dramatically when that inventory data came out um, higher than or lower than expected. So this is a short on natural gas. So uh, they stored less natural gas, so they drove the price up, not cold way down. But then you see there's this irrational bounce back up. Um, and the only explanation I can have for that is, is an order imbalance. Because uh, logically, again, the, the natural gas storage data, they stored less than expected, although it was still positive storage. And so you saw this uh, very dramatic uh, jerk down and then jerk up. The jerk down stopped us out. So again... Uh, we, we didn't lose any money on that trade, uh, but then you can see it's run up and now it's it's all pretty much back to where it was before. So as you will see uh, later on, uh, we're going to be watching cold very closely and uh, there's plenty of opportunities in making money in uh, swinging natural gas. It is very volatile. So again, I'd, I'd recommend using a, you know, a judicious stop so uh, you don't get hurt in, in this type of volatile action, as you can see. Uh, but again, we're going to keep watching cold. Hopefully some of our fellow beach bum traders made nice profits on these uh, scalp swing trades and uh, we'll do so again going forward. Uh, welcome, Tanavir. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you again this morning, too. So our second big trade for this week was Lab D. Lab D is the short on biotechs. Again, something we've been talking about for a while. Good opportunity. And we went long on Lab D on the 15th at 1587. Got stopped out on the 17th at 1779 for a 12% ROI on that trade or a monthly equivalent of 181%. I'm pretty sure a number of our Fellow Beach Bum traders made nice profits in Lab D. Uh, congratulations to you. You, know, you. you may even be possibly holding it and still profiting because we'll we'll look at the fact that it did uh, run up. And again, this is another area I think there's great opportunities going forward. So let's look at my Lab D trade and where it's going. So you can see we got in on the 15th at about 1587 near this this bottom here. It ran up. 
Again, when it crossed this uh, resistance level, I put a stop in below R1. So when it crossed R2, I put my stop just below R1. You can see they drove it a couple cents below that, stopped me out, and then proceeded to run it up even further through the rest of the week. So um, again, maybe I was a little aggressive with my stop, but it, it looked like it was rolling over. And again, I want to take, I want to protect my profits. And we have a couple videos on, on my strategy for manually moving steps up, stops up as uh, it runs up through various resistance levels. Now, you know, you make a choice based on the volatility of the stock whether you're going to stay uh, one support level down or two support levels down. And so, again, uh, if I'd stayed two support levels down, I would have still been in this trade um, and caught that further run up. Possible lesson learned. Maybe on Lab D, I need to uh, stay two levels down. So, again, congratulations to anybody who has uh, profited from that Lab D uh, trade and potentially still profiting. Uh, it looks like it's it's continuing to run up. So, again, Possibly it might be wise to keep your stops two levels down uh, to avoid that kind of uh, just uh, stop hunting uh, one level down. And again, Lab D is one we're going to continue to watch. Uh, it needs to come back down before I would take another uh, shot at it. But again, a uh, good opportunity. Another one is USOI. USOI is a monthly dividend paying um, ETN on oil. And I've been talking for several weeks that we wanted to get a chunk of this uh, to collect those monthly dividends. Uh, we got in right before the ex-dividend date. We got in on the 16th. The ex-dividend date was the 19th. So we got to collect this, this nice monthly dividend, which has a, an annual yield of about 21%. Um, and again, we're just going to sit there and collect this uh, annual dividend or this monthly dividend on USOI um, unless they run oil up a bit. You can see it's, you know, it went up a bit. And then uh, on the ex-dividend date, I, I explained this a little bit in the Discord as well. Typically, they will discount the stock price uh, equivalent to whatever the paid dividend is going to be on the ex-dividend date. So you see on the 19th, the price dropped. So you have to know when that ex-dividend date is. Otherwise, you're going to you're stop, you're going to get stopped out at that point because of that um, drop due to the dividend paid. So again, uh, someone I think specular, someone asked me in the in the um, discord if i was going to put a stop in and i said no because of this i don't want to get stopped out on the ex-dividend date and i'm also not going to take this profit yet um, because um, i want to again collect this dividend if they do spike it back up and it gives me a um, a price appreciation greater than what the dividend is then i would probably take that profit and then wait for it to come back down as as oil has run up a little bit and and should eventually come back down and welcome Nug Allen. thank you for joining us for the live stream today so that's our position on usoi we're still holding that again we'll hold it unless they spike oil up and the price appreciation is better than uh what we would get from monthly dividend otherwise we'll just sit there and collect monthly dividends uh, like we're doing in gold and silver another um Another position we took this week, and before I talk about that, let me just uh, remind everybody, if you want to get real-time trade alerts where we actually make these trades, when we get stopped out of these trades, you can join our Patreon. We post them, and our Patreons get emailed as soon as I'm able to post uh, the actual trades that we make. And again, as soon as I make a trade, I try to post that to our Patreons, and then it also gets posted in the alerts channels, uh, which our Patreon members have access to in our Discord. Again, you can find an invite to our Discord uh, in the description box below. So you can see, you know, here's our, our trade on cold. And you can also see the trade I posted on TMF. So I want to talk about this. Uh, TMF is a, a long, a bull 3x on 20-year treasuries. And I'll show you why I took that trade and also some potential uh, lessons learned. 
Uh, to answer your question, Captain Maddie, um, you can find a link to our Patreon in the description box below on the about page of our uh, YouTube channel. Also in the link section of our web, our homepage, which is beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. And to answer your question about cost, right now there are the there are three uh, tiers. Uh, there are the default Patreon tiers. We try to keep it as 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 cheap essentially as possible um, and give you as much value. But again, whatever you want to choose to support um, our efforts, that that's the main uh, purpose of our Patreon. And you do get uh, real-time updates to our trade alerts. Also, as you'll see uh, later on, when we do updates to our watch list into a week, uh, we post those also to our Patreons. And I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. But I wanted to mention that in particular right now is because I went long on TMF. Uh, we saw they were uh, running, uh, the treasury, uh, treasury yields were running up, prices were running down on Friday. And so pre-market, I was watching this. And so I put a, I put a buy in pre-market at 12.08. And I probably should have captured this if I was able to. Um, but again, I was watching it in pre-market, so I put this buy in. You can see there's there's uh, the pre-market levels, and it looked like there was some support underneath that in the level twos. And if we zoom out a little bit, uh, let's go not quite so far. Let's see, there, uh, if I go three months, we can see the previous bottom um, you see that little spike down previously was at that 1208 level. Then you can see my lower level uh, price target was about 1050. So my risk level is about a buck 50. And this is another thing I'm trying to improve on too, is uh, thinking about the risk reward. So here I'm I'm risking about a buck 50. And if we zoom this out to a year, I've got a potential reward of you know 20 something. So uh, the risk reward ratio is, is very attractive here. So I said, yeah, I, I don't have a problem risking a buck 50 to get, you know, potentially, uh, you know, two bucks uh, up to, you know, 10 bucks up to 30 bucks. Um, so again, that was my thought process and hopefully uh, that will help you. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments and the Discord, etc. If these, you find these trade reviews helpful, if you'd like me to go in more detail in these regards or or less, um, you know, you tell me. Is this something that is benefit to you, um, or 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 not? Um, and we'll adjust appropriately. So again, I mentioned the Patreon, etc., uh, because you can see uh, if you got that alert. Um, you could have gotten a much better price than I did. Um, it, I caught that buy while I was out on the beach in pre-market. And you could have gotten a better buy if you waited uh, for it to come down and then cross the BWAP down here. So I didn't post that out further to anywhere else or in social media because I wanted to give our members uh, an opportunity to get the best price possible in this trade. So again, that, that's a post typically after I uh, post to our Patreon, Discord, etc. I also uh, send that link out to uh, social media. But in this case, I wanted to uh, give our Beach Bum Trading community members, in particular our Patreon members, uh, an opportunity to get the best price possible. Again, um, I'm not hung up on getting the best price possible. I'm looking at that risk reward ratio. And as long as that's an acceptable risk reward ratio, I'm good with the trade. And again, here's a lesson for if you're swing trading and you're working or you're in school or whatever, here's, here's a great way that you can swing trade even if you're not. Um, going to be around watching the screens, um, you know, not hung up on getting necessarily the best price on entry or the top profit on exit is, you know, you place it at a good risk reward level and you let it go. And uh, if it hits during the day, okay, you got your buy. If it sells out and you got the profit you wanted, great. Uh, if you're missing the last, you know, 10% uh, up or down, uh, be happy with it. You know, you, you make money and that that's the goal. So again, you can swing trade this way. I, I put this in and like I said, I went to the beach and it hit and I'm uh, perfectly happy that in time, you know, I'm going to make, make money. So 
I hope that helps. So good. I'm glad to hear that, Captain Matty. Again, let me know if this trade analysis uh, going over these in more detail for you helped. I wanted to share my thought process um, and also how this is a great um, technique uh, if you're working a job in school, don't want to sit and watch screens all day. Um, I don't either. So um, the uh, another trade. I can't even remember. I think it was this Lab D guy I put in last Friday at this 1587 point, um, and I went to the beach. <laughs> so um, eventually it hit. I probably didn't get the best price on that one either, but we still made a lot of money. So um, I'm happy with that. So I hope that all helps. Okay, so let's talk about our watch list for this week. So this is a real-time watch list. This is what you know we're watching during the day. I have automation that runs on this list and alerts me when things uh, behave in the way I'd like, uh, tell me when to enter, when to uh, potentially buy. So these are things we're looking at buying. Um, yep, so BBN's one we've had on the list for a while. It's a, a Peruvian. Uh, gold, silver, et cetera, copper. So got got a number of basic materials. We've been watching it for a while. You'll see in a minute. I'm waiting for it to come down a little bit. They have been driving gold and silver down. So I, I left it on there. Maybe we'll get an opportunity uh, in BBN. Uh, we've swung this profitably in the past. Uh, Going to take FONR off. It's already run up. It's a medical device one, and they were running healthcare up a little bit. So um, we'll take that one off for now and wait to, for it to come back down. We talked about cold. Again, uh, I'm really watching the natural gas price uh, for them to spike it back up. Uh, just a little bit of a reminder is, you know, cold is uh, actually based on the oil and gas exploration companies. So it's indirectly correlated in a natural gas price, not directly correlated. But you can see when they drive the natural gas price up or down, coal tends to react. Um, and I'm waiting for, I actually have a buy sitting out there, a good to cancel buy sitting out at, uh, I think it's 971, which is a penny above. Uh, the last uh, lowest point that they spiked it. So I've got a, an order sitting there. If they spike that again up to, uh, so they spike natural gas up to 960 something, spike cold down to 971, I'm going to pick up an, an additional scalp position in cold and we'll play this game again. And we'll, you know, we'll keep doing this rinse and repeat, make money. So very similarly with Lab D, uh, we saw it's run up quite a bit, so it's got to come down. Um, but we'll see if they, you know, run tech up. You're going to see a lot of uh, my things on my watch list are based on uh, tech rolling over. Um, and we talked yesterday about possible um, discontinuity between tech in general, biotech, and semiconductors. So you're going to see uh, I'm looking for opportunities in all three of those areas. So Lab D is one we want to keep watching. Uh, uh, PBI, Pitney Bowes, we've been watching for a while. Um, you'll see it's, it's up a little bit. If it comes back down, uh, we'll, there's a turnaround play we're looking at. Here's semiconductors. We added SOX S to the watch list on the 18th. We also added SQQQ on the 18th. I didn't catch the position in time. I wasn't nimble enough when they, uh, you know, when the NASDAQ uh, tech dumped on Friday. Uh, hopefully some of our uh, members caught this. Um, I'll show you, you know, just briefly again, when we make intra-week updates to our watch list like that, we post them to our Patreon members and also in this uh, stock watch list channel in our Discord. So on the 18th, I updated, uh, added LabD, SOXS, SQQ. Um, we already had a position in TMF and USOI, and then we're going to talk about uh, the, the uranium plays in a minute. So again, 
if you want to get these interweek updates to our watch list, also now our Patreons have access to a web page where this is updated automatically daily. So um, I don't even have to post this out. It has, also has price targets in that web page. So. So we'll take a look at the semiconductors. We're looking for way, you know, opportunities to short semiconductors, short the Qs. Again, uh, we're already long TMF, but you may have a better opportunity to go long TMF uh, for a uh, reaction back in uh, 20 year treasuries. Euro, uh, the euro is clo very close to parity with the dollar. We saw dollar strength. We talked about that yesterday. So if the euro goes uh, parity or below, we're hoping I have an order out to buy ULE um, to play uh, the euro going back up. We talked about that we're already long USOI. Again, uh, it just went ex dividend. So if you want to. Uh, get it for the next month's dividend. You'll you'll have to hold it for approximately a month, and then we've talked about trading volatility, but we want uh, to see the VIX drop. You know, at least around 18. If it breaks down below 18, then we want to see 16. Uh, but when it turns back up, we will go long UVXY and wait for it to to spike up. So we'll take a look at all of these again. You know, you can get updates intraweek daily. Uh, get automatic updates to our watch list. So let's look at that watch list real quick. So we can see BVN is a little above where I'd like to buy it, but it looks like it may come back down. We talked about I'm going to take FONR off. It's run up. So you can see how easy it is to update your, maintain your watch list in Weeble. Just right click, delete. Just a quick reminder, I'm on the stock screen in the online browser version of Weeble. Just a real quick reminder right now, they're still offering their 12 free stocks when you open and fund an account in Weeble. Again, this is our main trading platform where we do most of our trading. Uh, we love the 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. trading hours. Uh, if you're not already using Weeble, again, right now you can get 12 free stocks. Two for opening an account, each valued up to $300. And if you fund the account with any amount, a penny, a buck, you can get between four and ten more free stocks each valued up to $3,000. So, you know, if you're not already using Webull, you can find our affiliate link in the description box below, in the link section, trading platforms off of our homepage, on our YouTube about channel, our YouTube channel about page, etc., all over the place. So uh, get your 12 free stocks. You can always cash them out and take the cash if you don't want to use the platform. That's fine. So... We looked at cold as well. You can see there's, you know, where I'm looking at buying back in at 971. Um, talks about Lab D. We can see it's run up quite a bit, so I, I, I need it to come back down. Uh, but if they do dip it again uh, and bottom it and turn it back up, we can take a another swipe at uh, Scalping Lab D, PBI, Pitney Bowes. You can see it's a little bit above where I'd like it. Then here's uh, semiconductors. So uh, previously we've made some nice money uh, scalping semiconductors with the SOC short. Again, there's a leveraged ETF short on semiconductors. We heard a lot of the semiconductor companies, NVIDIA, AMD, Micron, etc., all came out uh, with poor guidance. So it was kind of uh, odd that they had a tendency to run it up with the rest of tech. But like I said, we're seeing some divergence now between semiconductors, biotechs, and uh, general tech. So if we get an opportunity, if it bottoms in the 34, or 33 area, uh, it's got a nice risk reward profile. So same thing with the queues on Friday. You see, I, I didn't catch it quick enough when it bottomed on the 16th. Uh, you see, I added on the 18th, but didn't catch that run up on the 19th. Um, so again, if they run tech up, and uh, we've talked for some period of time, um, you know, you tend to get these reflexive plays. So the fact they dumped it on Friday, we might get a knee-jerk uh, 
reaction in the other direction uh, early this week. If we do, it might drive uh, Lab D socks and or SQQQ down and might give us an opportunity because the trend is down right now. So again, uh, shorting tech is its uh, uh, main thesis here. Also the strong dollar, they really spiked the dollar strength up. So if we get a reaction in the other direction, uh, we might get this euro parity. I had, like I said, I have a buy sitting out there at ten dollars um, in a retirement account because you see this is very choppy, low float, chops around. Um, so I just put it. It's in a fidelity account in a retirement account. If it hits, great. Uh, may take some time, just the way uh, this guy trades. So if there aren't any questions about the real-time watch list, we'll jump over to our bullpen. So yesterday we talked about uranium and the fact that we also are seeing a divergence of oil versus natural gas versus uranium, and uranium was down big. Um, and these are a couple uranium plays we've uh, swung before profitably. They have a nice risk reward profile. These two, DNN and UROY, are two that have a nice risk reward profile. Again, we swung these a uh, couple months ago uh, profitably in the past. Again, we've, we're already long TMF. So if we look at these uranium plays real quickly, again, another nice thing about Weeble, you can see I can have all kinds of different watch lists um, and update them independently. So we could see, I'll zoom this guy out a little bit. So I, I really prefer DNN around 92, but anything around a dollar for DNN is good. You can see it has a tendency to bounce off that dollar support. Um, so anywhere between 92 cents and a buck is a good price. A 20% return, 30% return is, is pretty good. So this guy's a, a pretty reliable swing. Um, you are a Y. You know, around 210, you can see the previous low around 210. We've got a p possible reward up to three, so almost a 50% reward potential. Um, and that's pretty a pretty stable bottom. We can see a couple times it's hit that 210 area and bounced up. So again, we're, we're looking uh, for it to come down a little bit to that 210 area. And then we'd uh, take a swing. So if they keep pushing uranium down, I'd love to swing these guys again for a nice profit. You can see they, like a lot of commodities, they have a nice cycle. They swing pretty nicely. Uh, so if they uh, become more attractive, again, we will post updates to our real-time watch list um, as soon as they look more attractive. So also our ETF, I'll quickly whip through our ETF spreadsheet. If there's any uh, particular categories that anyone wants to talk about, um, please post it in the chat real quick and I'll focus on those. Um, again, I, I use this even more nowadays to look for potential opportunities in various categories. Again, it'll show me the, the risk reward profile. It's, this data is delayed, it's, so it's not great for real-time day trading, uh, but it's good to look for opportunities to add to the watch list, et cetera, um, or trends. You know, if something's trending up or down, um, just along those lines, we also have the sectors tab. So during the day, I can see the sector rotation that we talked about yesterday. And we can see on Friday, you know, the only sector in the green was healthcare. So money was going into healthcare. And it was definitely coming out of uh, financials, materials. Energy was close to zero. So they were putting some money in energy. So again, I find this useful. And then if I see a sector that I want to focus on, then I can look at particular ETFs and a category within that sector. So. So then again, what I can look at is the greens are risk reward profile of greater than two. So I've got a current from support or the current price measured from the support and resistance. Again, these are automatically updated by some uh, executables that I run at the end of the day. So it uh, 
uses a number of automation pieces to figure out the nearest support and resistance to the current price, updates those. Then it uh, the risk reward profile currently, if it's greater than two, it shows up in green. We can see the 52 week and then also from the support to the resistance. So in particular, I look for, you know, four greens across the board or really current, you know, current 52 week and, and support to resistance. The most important two are current and support to resistance. And then I look at, okay, where is the current price relative to the support? So, you know, we can see lab D's run up. It's sitting at 20 right now. The support's at 15. So I'd like it to come down closer to 15, ideally. Uh, but we can see what that risk reward is. Right now, it's better than two or close to two. So that's why we're watching it. So, So I'll just I'll highlight a few other categories again. If anybody wants to focus on something, uh, we can. I know one we talked about China, but as you can see, the China uh, Yang risk reward's not so great right now. It's only 0 0.9. That's a short on China. The longs on China currently is pretty good, but the support is the support to resistance isn't great. So I, I'm not looking at any positions long or short really in China. We see yen is uh, it's close, but the risk reward from support to resistance isn't very good. So again, I'm I'm not terribly interested right now. Uh, these have to adjust uh, before I'd be interested in a position in China right now. Uh, here's the Dow. I also looked at shorts and all the other indices. So I looked at the short on the Dow. As you can see, uh, the support to resistance risk reward isn't better than two. Um, I'm also looking at this. I'm watching this dry bulk guy. Uh, it keeps coming down. Uh, when it finds support, I'm pretty interested in that, swinging that. But it's got to find a support level right now. Um, Here's the euro, so we can see it's got a very nice, very short-term risk reward. It's not great, but you know, 60% I'll take. Looked at this guy, but he's quite a bit away from his support level. So you can see it looks attractive. If it comes down a little bit, that would be interesting. I looked at this bang, but again, the profile's not so great. Um, here's some opportunities. If you're not long gold and silver, Right now, we're we're holding a sizable position in a number of gold miners, silver miners. We also have GLDI and SLBO. So we've got a plenty sizable position in gold and silver. So I'm not pursuing that right now, but you can see the risk reward profile of some of these longs on the gold and silver miners is pretty attractive. So GDXU, I keep getting alerts on uh, that it's attractive. Um, that's that's the most attractive one is GDXU. So again, if you're interested in a long on gold, GDXU might be good. So here's SQQQ. We can see it's nice, attractive. Support to resistance over two. Current about eight. Very attractive. Cold also very attractive. Um, oils, you know, aren't bad shorts on oil we have a, a, a position in drip already um, so shorts on oil especially it's been bouncing around 90 might be an opportunity if you're interested in shorting oil so again i also looked at the russells shorting the russell um, it's it's not too bad but you can see it's currently at 46 support at 30 34 so uh, I'd like to see that come down. But again, the risk reward's not too bad. Same way with the S&P. Uh, but it's got a little bit of a ways to come down to support. So again, that's why I picked the SQQQ as the most attractive one right now. We can see socks is very nice. And we can see silver has some opportunities. So this ultra silver AQ. AGQ, I keep getting alerts on too. It looks pretty attractive, but again, I've got plenty of positions in silver. And here's our TMF. So again, we're already long that guy. 
uranium needs to come down if i want to take an etf position in uranium it's 62 support at 50 and then there's our ubxy we're watching but again i'd like to see the vix down 18 or below before i uh, take a position in ubxy so again if there aren't any further questions um again just a reminder none of this is financial advice this is for education and uh, hopefully entertainment purposes only, uh, but we hope that this all helps you succeed in your trading. So again, if you have any questions, please let us know. If it's after this video, uh, you can put it in the comments to this video. You can uh, enter them in our Discord. We hope you'll join our Discord, join our Beach Pump Trading Community Discord. You can again find the uh, an invite. It's free to join. So anybody can join the Discord, discuss things with your fellow Beach Bump traders. Again, you can find a link in the description box below, in the link section in our social media on our website, beachbumptrading.com, bum without the U, and uh, join in the discussions in our Discord. Again, ask us any questions, tag us. Uh, we'll try to answer them as soon as we're able. Let me take a drink a sec. Okay, uh, in terms of shopping list, really nothing's changed. Um, I do need to do some further digging. I, uh, I have a new video out um, with some of our previous strategies for recession proofing your portfolio. So this is part one of a series of videos on recession proofing and inflation proofing your portfolio. So I would recommend that in terms of uh, culling your shopping list uh, for making sure it is recession proof and inflation proof. And again, we'll be coming out with uh, further of our previously discussed strategies on how to do this. Uh, we've been talking about this for months. So again, I would recommend it. Um, we've talked about a number of our trade ideas for this week. If anybody else has some other trade ideas you'd like to discuss, so we Again, post them in the chat, um, you know, in our Discord, etc. Also, if you have other questions, as we mentioned. But uh, one I wanted to follow up on is last week we talked about that Spacula, Speculation, uh, one of our great supporters and uh, fellow beach bum traders was asking about uh, both Rivian and Lucid. So we offered to do due diligence on uh, both Rivian and Lucid got some positive feedback that that would be helpful. So this past week, I went and did uh, due diligence videos on both Rivian and Lucid. So as a bonus for uh, watching this uh, weekly trading game plan part two, uh, these videos are currently unlisted. Um, they've been um, promoted or provided to our Patreon members already for uh, early access. Um, but again, as a bonus for watching this video, as long as you have, uh, if you go in the notes, you can find the links to the due diligence videos on Rivian and, and Lucid that we recently did. So um, hopefully that helps. And again, you can tell us what you think of that. If you have a differing opinion, we'd love to hear it and, and love to hear why. So. So again, and if you're not already subscribed to our Beach Bum Trading uh, YouTube channel, as those get published, uh, we hope that you will choose to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and then when those get published, uh, you will get automatically notified when they're uh, published, as well as our other videos. We will be coming out with further videos on recession-proofing your portfolio. And if there's other due diligence videos you would like us to do, um, again, you can put them in the comments to this video. You can hit us up on in our Discord uh, via social media. All the links to our social media sites are on our webpage. Um, you can just uh, hit us up on social media. We have a Facebook group as well. So you can uh, ask us there as well. And again, our website is beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U. 
So you can find links to all our tools, trading platforms, social media sites, etc. More business resources, etc. Um, easy access from our homepage. So again, we hope you'll choose to subscribe. Let us know how else we can help you in your trading career um, and answer any questions that you might have. So again, if there aren't any further questions in the chat, I will go ahead and wrap up. Look into TLT. Okay, so Tanvir is ask, asking to look into TLT. So I'll do that real quick. So first, I'm going to look at the risk reward profile from the uh, spreadsheet. So it tells me TLT is at 113. Tells me supports at 108. Tells me the risk reward is all, it tells me resistance is at 120. And it only has a 52-week high of 155. So, um, you know, none of those are hitting my risk-reward uh, profile of two or better. So, again, that's why I like TMF better than TLT because at least it's got a 1.2 and 52-week, you know, of a three. So, again, I, I like TMF better than TLT, but I'll we'll look at it in... Um, Finviz as well. So again, uh, quick access to tools. You can go to trading tools, Finviz. So we could see, okay, TLT was riding the upper uh, trend line of this channel. It got rejected. Again, if we look at the futures as well, because this is also on the 20-year bonds, so it's not leveraged, so it's, you know. So if we go down to bonds and we look at the 30-year, because this is 20-year plus bonds, we see they spike the price down, spike the yields up, prices down on bonds on Friday. So that drove TLT down, drove TMF down too. Um, but you can see, again, TLT sitting in the upper portion of a downward trending channel. So, uh, again, I, I don't like the risk reward on that. If we look at TMF, again, it's going to be, it's very similar. It's got resistance up to 14 something. If we zoom this guy out. So, but it's got, you know, nice reward up to 30. We look at T TLT similarly. So you've got some risk down to, you know, 107, 108. You got, you know, support or resistance up at 120 and then nice upside from there. So you got maybe 40 upside. You know, less than 10 downside. So it's it's decent. You know, they're both about the same. Um, I like the leverage of T, TMF uh, because the risk reward profile is a little bit better. So see if there's any. Yeah, they're, they're both T, TLT, TMF. They're both tracking the um, 20 plus year treasuries. Uh, it's just TMF is, is leveraged, right? It's 3x leveraged. So. You're going to get again more, a little bit more reward. Uh, it's it's going to be more more volatile, so you need to be a little careful. Um, but again, it, it's going to give you a better risk reward with TMF versus TLT. And you can see in the spreadsheet we have a number of uh, Treasury guys, and uh, so we can see the profiles. You know, this this guy doesn't look too bad, uh, but again, it's only one point four. This is on seven to ten year. Um, I don't, I don't think I could find anything on a shorter time frame. So I hope that helps. Captain Maddie says GRFX, a Chinese stock. Yeah, we're, we're not, we don't recommend uh, any individual Chinese stocks um, or anybody that's at risk of uh, retaliation from China. We talked about that uh, in more detail yesterday, so. And Art of Mingo, welcome. Thank you. Uh, nice to see you. NMG, you're asking for a due diligence on NMG. I'm not familiar with that offhand. Let me look at it real quick. And then I'm going to wrap up pretty quick. Uh, 
Well, it looks like it's run. It's a graphite play, and, and that says it's Canada. And I get that wrong. NMG, right? This says it's a Canadian graphite company. But it looks like it's run way up. So it broke, uh, broke out, broke out of this channel, ran way up. Looks pretty interesting if you caught it on that on that breakout. Looks like it's got if it's uh, could break its 200-day uh, moving average and uh, could really run. Graphite's a good theme. Can't tell if they're profitable. So yeah, I can I can try to dig into that uh, if I'm able. So foreign companies sometimes you know this guy's not showing any metrics. Um, sometimes it's hard to get the financials. Yeah, it's showing no financials. So hard, soft and hard to do due diligence, good due diligence on foreign companies because you can't see their financials, you can't see their metrics, um, et cetera. So I, I tend to stay away from them unless I can find some other indication that they're actually profitable and, and get better metrics. So I'll, I'll check in chart mill, see what I can find. But again, if I can't get further detail, um, then I won't be able to really do uh, adequate due diligence on that. Let me just grab that guy. I'll put it in the notes. Okay. So thank you for asking. Like I said, I'll see what I can do. And I'll look at your GRFX real quick, uh, Captain Maddie. We'll just take a look at it. GRFX. I don't even, it doesn't even come up in FinBiz. So I, I can't answer that one. We'll see if it comes up in Weeble, but I, I doubt it. GRFX. Okay, so it came up in Weeble. I don't know why. Is it an over-the-counter? Because over-the-counters will not come up in um, will not come up in Finviz. So again, it looks like it's you know it's run way up, spiked way up, got dumped. I mean, this looks like a meme day trade, you know. So, you know, we, we don't chase that kind of stuff, and, and please be very careful. I, I'm glad somebody didn't ask about Blood Bath and Beyond. As again, we, we don't chase that kind of stuff. Please be careful. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, get blown up, quit trading uh, because they got blown up. Uh, we, we really don't want to see uh, that happen to anybody. Um, okay. So I hope that all helps. Again, if you have any further requests, questions, etc., put them in the comments below. I hope you will hit the like button on your way out and the notify bell if you're not already getting notified of our further uh, videos, live streams, etc. Uh, I thank you all for joining us. I appreciate the interaction. It's great. Love it. Let's continue the interaction uh, in our Discord. And you guys have a great rest of your weekend. And Good luck, and I hope you are very successful for your trading week. Thank you, and have a great day.